event two went really well. Uh, we had a one month break after that. Preparation is going really well. For each track, I think we have a good, good chance to win each race. So we are sitting in P3 right now. I think eight points of the lead of the championship. And yeah, obviously we have a good, good chance if we keep this up to win the championship. And ultimately that's the, that's the goal I have. And hopefully Jano has this as well. So we're here for event three of the F1 Esports series of 2019 and we are the commentators, the people you hear shouting a lot. I'm Jack Nichols, this is GP2 champion Davide Valsecchi. It was a 1-3 for, for Renault in Montreal, which was really impressive. Cedric Tome winning and Jana Watmir finishing in third and they've had a strong season, Renault. Tonitsa as well, Davide, and Jana Watmir. It's their first season in F1 Esports and they're right there at the front. It's really impressive. Watmir. David Tunizza, I don't know, uh, from my point of view, they have a special talent because immediately, first season, bam, right at the top. So we're just done with qualifying in Hockenheim. Um, we tried to do four wins, which we succeeded to do, which was really tricky with timing. Um, the first lap I invalidated, uh, I ran wide in turn one and uh, got my lap, lap taken away. Um, but the other three runs I built it up nicely and uh, the final run um, I almost did a perfect lap. You've just put in the fastest lap, good job. And Spa got blocked a little bit on one of the runs, which was annoying. I think for Spa, starting P3 is quite good, um, simply because there's such a long run down to turn four, down to Lecombe. Starting P2 or P3 is better than starting on pole. The lap was not completely, completely clean, there were a lot of, lot of small mistakes, but good starting position. Obviously we have a really good chance of winning the whole event now. Our mindset was to win from the very beginning and we believe we can win with this team. And we've got amazing talent from top to bottom. So the strategy for Germany, we'll be starting on the medium tyre because the soft tyres, um, they pretty much die and overheat after the first three or four laps. Although someone may initially get a good start, at the start of the race maybe make up some positions, at the end of the race they're going to be very punished you know, in terms of lap time and what they can actually do in tyre wear, tyre temperatures. It's Otmir and Tormler on the front row, all five lights are on, and we're racing in Germany. It's a pretty decent start from Jano Otmir. Yoni Tormler gets the better getaway to Benigwe. Oh, goodness me. The better getaway, though. Great start to the race for Tormler, less so for me, and Otmir drops into second position. When the grid lined up, everyone was signing on soft, so that was um, pretty nerve-wracking. We thought more people would be on mediums. And at the start of the race, we lost the position straight away from pole. Um, Jano went to P2 straight away and came under attack from Tunisia and uh, Tomla, not only Tomla, he had about three or four second leads. We decided to start on the mediums, uh, simply because the softs go off really fast. Uh, and with a heavier tank, they tend to overheat even faster. But obviously starting on mediums was going to be very tricky, uh, simply because I had to keep uh, a big part of the drivers behind me on softs, so they couldn't have the advantage uh, on the soft tyre that I didn't have because I was on the mediums. 
Here they come towards turn six, getting quicker and quicker, and there Tonitza finds the inside line, and he gets past Jano Watmir and up into second position. That was fairly straightforward in the end for Tonitza. A good move, and Otmir drops to third. I was kind of questioning the strategy a little bit. I didn't really think it was working out too well. Um, but once they pitted, he just made the tyres work. He just did another seven laps, super, super consistent. Lap 10, 11, I thought maybe this is not going to work. Uh, but as soon as I drove out of the pits, I saw uh, I rejoined in P3 or P4, uh, P4, I think so, almost P5. And then uh, from there on, I just made the right moves at the right time. But yeah, just mega race. Otmir goes to the outside though and sweeps through into the lead of the race at Ockenheim. Great tyre strategy. Here's Tormela. Yeah, there's nothing I can do. <laughs> Copy. Yeah, he's not wrong. He's right. <laughs> You're right. He's right. Unbelievable. Two seconds in front of everyone. Eh? Yeah, I think this has been one of the strongest performances in the history of F1 Esports here today. Jano Otmir out across the line to take victory in Hockenheim. Great race from Otmir. I was hoping for this uh, for five ra six, six races long already, so uh, I got second ones, third, but finally. are on, we're racing in Spa, good getaway from Berezne, he's going to hold the lead as they come into the hairpin right-hander at the source and there goes Otmir, immediately up the inside of the Red Bull. Started P3 in Spa, uh, went for the same strategy, medium to soft, which is obviously really tricky to start. Uh, in the opening lap, I tangled with one of the racing points. With Jano Otmir involved in the fight as well, Berezne holds the lead, no! Through goes Freddy Rasmussen, and there goes Danieli Haddad. Up into second place, they have a bit of contact, a bit of a slide, and that allows Tanitza to the inside. So we lost touch of the number one and two, um, which costs me obviously later on in the race. Um, didn't that DRS for a big part of the race, which uh, was unfortunate. Uh, I think I might have been able to stay in touch with the top two if this didn't happen. But um, in the end, we still got close, uh, finished one second behind Rasmussen. Berezne gets on the brakes, gets it stopped, and it's Daniel Berezne who's going to take the win! Yes, yes, come on! Yes, come on! Get in there, my boy! So yeah, P3, good points. Uh, obviously, should have been two places higher, but uh, yeah, that's due to no fault of my own. in Monza, it looked like quite a bit of wheel spin for Brendan Lee, very good getaway for Nicholas Longway as they come down towards Turn 1. So for Monza, I think this is probably the track we were least confident on. I know it's not a favour of the drivers, but yeah, the other two tracks are really, really strong for us. But going to this one, we knew we could still do well, um, just struggled a little bit of consistency. Last race, my qualifying was bad, and around Monza, with so much slipstream, it's hard to to overtake people if, if they have someone in front because you can't outbreak them because then you will hit the car, uh, the car in front. Um, so we tried a different strategy which paid off. We went from P10 to P8. I uh, went from P10 to P11 at the start, so in P11 to P8, battling for P5. Uh, but I just didn't have uh, the tire life anymore in the end. For the final time, lap 13 of 13, it's Daniel Berezne who is the winner in Monza. Another win in the F1 Esports Pro Series for Daniel Berezne. So there's a lot of positives to take. We've proven we can get pole positions, we can win races, um, we can lead championships. Uh, but it's about consistency and we, we can't really afford for just one driver. Um, our real thought pro process really was last event we got the most points with Yarda and Cedric. They work very, very well together. They work longer together. I kind of went of experience because the differences in their best lap times are only maybe like a tenth of a second. 
even though some arguably could be is more consistent, but just go, go back to the drawing board, uh, just see who's the quickest, the two quickest, and whoever's the two quickest, we're really, we've got to go with that for the last event now. It's not really about experience now, it's about who can deliver in qualifying, because as you saw today, if you're outside the top five in qualifying, it's going to be very difficult to get in the top five.